All right, so here we have a square and a cube, and we're trying to relate both of these things to the concept of exponents, because exponents are new, and it's hard to use a mouse when you're trying to write words. So exponents. So right here, we have a square, and it has two dimensions. What are the two dimensions? Well, typically we would talk about them as length and width, right? It's like a horizontal dimension and a vertical dimension. As opposed to a cube, a cube has three dimensions. A cube has not only length and width, it also has this thing that you can call it sort of whatever you want, but I would say it has length, width, and depth. Depth is the part that makes it 3D, like coming out at you, you know, like a, make a 3D movie. Okay, <clears throat> so that translates into uh, numbers in that a perfect square number it could be, uh, you're dealing with a square. If I had a square that was one by one, it's the same on both sides because all squares, by definition, have the same length and width. So the area of a one by one square is one. Now, if I made it two by two, the area of that two by two square will be four. And if I made this square three by three, then if I made it the square three by three, then the area would be nine. If I made it instead four by four, the area would be 16. Now what I'm doing here is I'm generating a list of perfect square numbers. And the next perfect square number is 25. Please be able to tell me why. Why is the area of 25 a perfect square number? Because the length and the width would be five, five by five. That's important to understand. So one, four, nine, 16, 25 is the beginning of your perfect square set of numbers. Can anybody guess what the next one would be? Pause it and then yell it out. Good, it'd be 36 and then 49 and then 64 and then nine times nine is 81 <clears throat> and 10 times 10 is 100. Now, a cube, by definition, is like a square, but three-dimensional, and all the side lengths would be the same. So if I had a cube with a height of one, a depth of one, and a width of one, the volume, in this case, is what we're talking about. Because with the three dimensions, the third dimension creates volume. It creates space inside. Look at that. Look how I spelled volume. Pretty good, right? Looks like Badoom. So if I had a cube one by one by one, length times width times height, the perfect cube number is one. That's the volume of a one by one by one cube. So if I have a cube that's too high, too wide, and too deep, the volume will be two times two times two, which is eight. Eight is another perfect cube number. And in the lesson the other day, we saw if you take three cubes by three unit cubes by three unit cubes it would be three by three by three altogether it took 27 little cubes to make one bigger cube 27 is the next largest perfect cube number and you've know so far i've gone one two and three for length of sides of this cube well what number comes after three when you count by ones very good four so if I said this cube was four by four by four, all the sides are the same, the volume is 64 because four times four times four is 64. And that's how I start my perfect cube number list. Okay, so hopefully you internalize the pictures of the square and the cube. Now we're gonna talk about how to figure out uh, the units we're talking about. When you have length or width, that's one dimension. A line is one dimension. So if I just drew, and I don't really have a straight line tool, but if I drew this 
and said it was three centimeters long. That's one dimension. And I would say that this line is three centimeters long. Now I've got a square, it's two dimensions. So area is two dimensional. So I would say length times width equals nine, but it's not just nine centimeters because we're not counting up the length of the sides anymore. We're counting how many pieces that are squares fit in the middle. So there are nine squares. That's where the select bone and the two comes from. This says there are nine centimeters squared. Now I could write this as three squared centimeters squared, which looks very confusing. Why are there two exponents there? Well, the first one just represents three times three, which is how you find the area of a square, multiplying length times width. That's where this squared comes from, the fact that it's representing three times three. But this squared above where the centimeter is, this represents the fact that you're actually counting square units. So that's why we can have two exponents and it makes perfect sense. So now I've got a cube. Side lengths are still three. Each length is three centimeters. That's one dimension. If I say, what's the area of one face? That would be two dimensions. The faces here are all squares. Three by three is nine. So this face has an area of nine square centimeters. But if we're talking volume, that's three dimensional. So I would do length times width times height. So I would get 27. And I'm counting up 27 little cubes that fit inside or make up this three by three by three cubes. So I would say 27 centimeters cubed. That's where the three is in the exponent for centimeters because they're cubic centimeters. So little cubes that are built in here. You've seen this before. I can't really figure that. I draw, you get the idea. There's 27 of those little cubes in here. But see, I could write 27 as three to the third power. That still means 27, but it's just another way of saying 27 because it means three times three times three. And the exponent of three above the centimeter means that we're counting cubic centimeters, which is a three dimensional measurement. So I could say three to the third power cubic centimeters, and that's the answer to the volume of this cube. I could even say three times three to the second power cubic centimeters. And my, doesn't that look confusing? You could interpret that as the fact that there are three, there are three layers of three by three squares, right? There are three layers of nine, nine plus nine plus nine is 27. So again, sometimes you'll see two exponents. One is for the units. One is for how you can uh, talk about numbers in an exponential way, like by using exponents. It's the same factor three times. For squares, it's the same factor two times. And if you're doing linear, well, it's just three to centimeters. I could say three to the first power, but we don't typically do that because that just means three. And there's no real sense in doing that, but you do have exponents of one. Thanks for watching.